In this video, I show you what a preparation of financial statements looks like. I know how you auditors are, how you accountants are. You love examples. So I'm going to give you an example in this video of a preparation of financial statements under ARC 70 of the SARS. So let's take a look. So we start with the cover sheet. And then let's go to the table of contents. It looks like this. And so we see that there's going to be a disclaimer, a balance sheet, statement of operations, statement of members, equity, a selected disclosure, and then a schedule of salaries and taxes. So let's go to that disclaimer. And it looks like this. So you would put this wording on your CPA firm's letterhead, and it would read like this. Uh, you can now take out the word accordingly, so you can just say, and we do not express an opinion. That's one change that has occurred in the SARS. Not a big deal, but you could strike the word accordingly here. So that's the disclaimer, and then we're going to go to the balance sheet and see what it looks like. So typical balance sheet, this is a gap of financial statement. It's not a tax basis statement, but using the uh, gap, we prepared this balance sheet. You can see the total assets equal the total liabilities and members' equity. But most importantly for this presentation, take a look at the bottom of the page. I say, see accountant's disclaimer. Then I say the financial statements do not include the statement of cash flows. This example is excluding the statement of cash flows, and you can do that. And then finally, I say substantially all disclosures re required by accounting principles generally accepted in the United States are not included. So this is the legend you're going to see at the bottom of the financial statements. And if you're uh, using ARC 70, you can follow this same guidance and you'll be in good shape. Now, let's go to the income statement, typical income statement, revenues, cost of revenues, operating expenses, and net loss, 376, 321. We'll see that number on the next page. Uh, but notice again, at the bottom of the page, we've got this legend again. See accountant's disclaimer. The financial statements do not include the cash statement, statement of cash flows, and then substantially all disclosures are omitted. Now, let's go to the statement of members' equity, and we see here that uh, net loss number, 376, 321. So that brings our members' equity down to 1,300. 73,679. If we want to tie that number back to the balance sheet, we can go over here and see that number here. And here you see the selected disclosure. So in a preparation engagement or a compilation for that matter, either one, you can add a selected disclosure and it looks like this. So this would be where you're disclosing maybe one or two items. And notice in the heading, we say substantially all disclosures required are not included because substantially all of the disclosures are not included. We just have this one disclosure here. Notice at the bottom of even the disclosure page, we have this language, see accountant's disclaimer, and the financial statements do not include the cash flows, statement of cash flows. Now, let's look at the supplementary information, and we see uh, this detail of salaries and taxes, 
And at the bottom of this page, we're going to see that same language again, even on, even on the supplementary information page. In conclusion, this financial statement looks like any other financial statement. It's just that we are putting a disclaimer on uh, the CPA firm's letterhead. We see that example here. This is a gap example. So if you're using the tax basis of accounting, for example, then there's going to be a change. So let's take a quick look at what one of those looks like. So here's a tax basis example. We see the cover page. In the table of contents, we see balance sheet tax basis and then the statement of operations tax basis. Now the disclaimer looks like this. And notice I'm not really using the tax basis language here. I'm just saying see the accompanying uh, financial statements and those will be on a tax basis. When we look at the when we look at the balance sheet, we see balance sheet tax basis and we see total assets at the bottom of the page. We have C accountants disclaimer and then that other legend about substantially all disclosures being omitted. But notice in this instance, we say substantially all disclosures ordinarily included in financial statements prepared in accordance with the tax basis of accounting are not included. So we tweak that language for the tax basis example. Here's the second page of the balance sheet uh, and those numbers, the total, total liabilities and members equity equals the total assets on the prior page. And there's that, so we're good there. And then there's the legend at the bottom of the page. And then we have a statement operations and members equity tax basis. So here we've got revenues, expenses, net income, and members equity. In this example, I'm not including any disclosure, so I don't have a selected disclosure. Notice how simple this tax basis presentation is. You've got just the balance sheet, and then you have just the income statement, and no disclosures, no supplementary information, no cash flow statement. So this is about as easy as it gets. And if you're preparing a tax return, and you've already prepared those numbers for the 1120, why not just use the tax basis of accounting in creating the financial statements that you're going to give to your client? So that's how ARC 70 looks in a typical gap basis financial statement and a tax basis financial statement. It's really easy to issue statements with ARC 70, as you can see especially on that tax basis presentation. There's just a balance sheet and an income statement, and then the page for the disclaimer, and you're done. That's all you really have to do. And, and by the way, you, it could be even simpler where you had just the balance sheet. So you can do a single statement under ARC 70 if you would like, then you'd have the disclaimer and then the one page, say the balance sheet, in that preparation engagement. If you haven't used ARC 70 before and you've got a client that comes in and needs financial statements really quick, this is a good option. You don't have to document your independence, so that will save you a step. You do need to have an engagement letter even for the preparation engagement. So keep that in mind. When you're done with the preparation engagement, at a minimum, you need a copy of the financial statements and then the engagement letter. So I hope these examples help you as you do your financial statements 
in the future. Uh, one last word, you want to be very clear about what you are doing here. In other words, this is not an audit. It's not a review. It's not even a compilation. It's simply you're preparing the financial statements. So hope that helps. Take care. Till next time, take care. Bye now.